Do you see this? Like, what? <laughs> Today I'm talking about why I broke up with my therapist. So the way that I'm gonna do this, first, why I broke up with my therapist, for those of you guys who wanna just like skip to the good stuff. Then I'm gonna talk about why I started therapy and like my history with like what happened there and what I learned from therapy. I might do what I learned and then why. I don't know. So my first question is how did I realize it was time to break up with my therapist? A few weeks back I was having a horrible, horrible, horrible body image day. One of the worst body image days I've had in years. I was freaking out. In therapy I have learned how to navigate negative thoughts, trust myself, and trust that I know what's right for myself. And it's probably one of the been and it's probably been one of the most formative experiences in terms of not feeling like my sad times and my depressions and my anxieties and my negative thoughts are like ruining my life, but are things that I have power over, things that I have control over and how to sit in them and and really feel them and allow myself to experience them without trying to push them away or resist or do any of these things or try to control and fix like I've always done in the past, including with my body. So that was really powerful for me because when I was in Colorado with my mom and having a horrible body image day, instead of going on a diet or restricting or doing any of the things that in any other stage of my life I would have done or continued to talk negatively about myself or anything like that. What I did was I created the I Feel Fat workbook and it's steps that I took myself through that night in order to get myself out of it and steps that I've now given to over a hundred people who have downloaded the workbook on my website. I will link it below winniecatalano.com slash ebooks and it was a total game changer for me. One, because there's something about producing a product that actually helps other people. That is this sort of, this moment that I can't really explain. It's this, wow, other people are helped with what helps me. That's so beautiful that we can connect like that. And then two, it was really important for me because it gave me this confidence that I can do this. I have the tools. Therapy is supposed to give you the tools to help you navigate your own brain. <laughs> and I have the tools. So that was my moment that I realized, okay, I haven't been to therapy in a couple weeks because I had been traveling. I was able to turn a really, really dark situation into something that was really beautiful and a growing and learning experience for me. I think I've gotten everything I need to out of this therapist. So now I'll give you guys a brief rundown of why I decided to go to therapy. As you guys know, two years ago, my dad died, or maybe you didn't know that, but two years ago, my dad died, and I immediately had to like plan his memorial, deal with all the things that you have to deal with after someone dies, and then go straight into my dietetic internship. I moved across the state, I moved up to Northern California in a very rural area that I was completely unfamiliar with, uh, luckily with two other interns, but I felt like I was in the middle of nowhere trying to just get through the next step. Everything in my life has always been getting through to the next step, going, 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 going. And dieting was always the same way for me. It was like, well, when I lose weight, when I do this, like I just need to get through today, I need to get through tomorrow, I need to get through this, in order to like have this outcome that's gonna make me happy and call all of college was like getting through to the next step, like constantly looking ahead. Once I got done with my dietetic internship, I passed my credentials and moved home. I, I basically had this moment of like, I can't keep hustling forward to the next thing because there are no next steps anymore. This is what I had been working towards for what feels like my whole life because you're always like in, in school looking ahead to the next thing. And now I'm forced to like slow down and I literally don't know how without having like a full on mental break. So last summer I started seeing this therapist to do what I thought was being able to organize my brain. Cause I was like, I can't think straight. I have horrible brain fog. I'm, I feel so overwhelmed and anxious all the time. I feel like I can't get anything done. I don't know how to do anything. Like I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. And so I thought I was going in to get more organized. What I found out <laughs> was, and this is like the irony of therapy, you go thinking one thing and then you find out something completely different because you're like, oh my God, look at all this baggage that I've like never unpacked. How'd that get there? Like, oh yeah, that one time that I like buried my traumas, like huh, weird, how'd that get there? So obviously had to do a lot of unpacking about my dad, a lot of crying about my dad, grieving. The other thing that happened towards the end of college, actually around the time that I graduated, I pursued this relationship that was not meant for me. I was really forcing something that like, should not have happened and yet I did. I fell in love with this guy who 
essentially validated this belief that I had about myself that I was broken. I basically needed someone in my life to look at me and say, yes, you're broken, but I still love you. And then it turned into this like very toxic power dynamic. Looking back, and one of the things that I realized in therapy was that my dad was dying at that point. So I was definitely distracting myself from the reality of what was going on by like throwing myself into this relationship that was horrible for me. I was looking for answers in someone else. I was looking for answers in, in anything else really. But unfortunately, the place that I looked for answers was someone who was like a reflection of the way that I felt about myself and reinforced the things that I felt about myself, which were not good. So because of that relationship, it took, I was like in a horrible relationship with myself. I did not trust myself. I know I was like very angry a lot and very sad. I just didn't trust myself. Honestly, I didn't trust my own thoughts. I didn't trust my own brain. I didn't trust myself in relationships. I didn't, I didn't like myself in relationships. I didn't like myself yeah, I just didn't really like myself. So going to therapy was huge for me because it was this safe space that I could explore and say things, talk about past relationships, talk about my dad, talk about my experiences, say things that I believed about myself and then have my therapist be like, wait, did you just hear what you just said about yourself? Like, do you really believe that? And it was like, yeah, I do really believe that. And it's like, oh my God, I believe that about myself. Like that is so dark. <laughs> Um, and you, you, a lot of times you need someone else to point those things out and say, that doesn't seem like a very healthy belief to have about yourself. Where did you learn that? And then it's like, oh, I learned that from X, Y, and Z. Is that serving you? No, definitely not. Do you have evidence to support that that's actually not true? Yeah, totally. There's a lot of things in my life that support that that's not true. Okay, well, let's work on you trusting yourself then. Let's work on believing these positive things about yourself. That was like a total game changer for me. Basically, we went through so much the past year together, me and the therapist, including that video, the like uh, heartbreak video, which I'll link to down below. And everything I've learned about rewiring the way that you speak to yourself and like learning how to deal with negative thoughts has come from this therapist. That was so, so life-changing for me and something that I will take with me forever. When I published the workbook, I had already been thinking maybe this isn't the healthiest decision for me to continue seeing her because what I was doing essentially was I went through this phase of like crying a lot and feeling, it felt like the emotional floodgates had opened as what I described to everyone. I was like, sorry, I can't come out this weekend. My emotional floodgates are open. <laughs> And then somewhere along the way, a few months ago, I closed those emotional floodgates and I reserved my crying for my one hour on Mondays. And as helpful as that was when I was learning how to survive, once I had unpacked and like dealt with a lot of the trauma, the sadness underneath, it was no longer that helpful because I felt like I was actually shutting off my like initial reactions and like saving it for therapy. It was this aha moment of like, oh my God, I can do this. I'm gonna be okay. Like I have the tools that I need to do this. And if I don't have the tools, I have the trust in myself to find new tools that will help me. It's kind of like taking the training wheels off your, your mental health bike. Leaving therapy is like taking the training wheels off and being like, be free. <laughs> Good luck out there. And so when I talked to her, we had a closing session yesterday and I cried a lot during the closing session because it feels like a chapter. I'm like saying goodbye to a chapter in my life, which is so beautiful and so like terrifying all at the same time. And she was like, after I read your workbook, I realized that you were done here too. She was like, normally I'm the one pressuring people and saying, you need to go out on your own now. Like you need to put this into practice. And so it was just really nice to have you be the one to recognize that. Like it just shows how far you've come and like how much you trust yourself. And that was so awesome for me to hear from her. One of the other things she said was she was like, I like to have these closing sessions because very rarely in life do we get the kind of closure that we're looking for, that kind of healthy closure from someone else. And so to have that in therapy, I think is a really powerful tool because it gives us that opportunity to have a healthy closure, to say the things that we need to say, to reflect on how far you've come and to close that chapter. And that's really what I felt like I was doing. And I think that ever since I decided last week that I wanted to be done with therapy for right now, for right now, <laughs> I will be back. <laughs> I think the emotional heaviness that I was feeling last week and posting about on my Instagram stories and you know talking a lot about and just this sort of exhaustion and draining was because I'm closing this chapter in my life. All of this was like a signal to me that I'm in a new chapter now and I've been in this transition period and it's been so emotionally taxing but so beautiful and I'm really excited for this new chapter but this definitely feels like a significant point for me to end 
and take that next step forward. One of the things I said to her was I was like, this is the first time in my life that I feel like I'm not just trying to survive, that I'm actually like living. And that was like the greatest gift. That second to just like being able to trust myself again was such a gift and I'm so grateful for her. I think she's so awesome. So yeah, I just wanted to explain that to you guys. One of the things I do want to update you on is that I have offered a few new services. I do email support, which I actually just did my first one the other day because I just started offering it and it went so well. Basically ask me any question, give me some background and I'll answer one question and I answer it really thoroughly because I really, really care about giving you guys like the best possible support that I can. I also do a value sessions, which I think I want to rename to like support package or something. It's two sessions to help identify your values. You're on this intuitive eating journey by yourself to help sort of take that next steps and get you unstuck in your journey. And then I do six month packages, which are my most popular option. And yeah, I have my I Feel Fat workbook. Definitely sign up for my newsletter on my website because I'm releasing an emotional and binge eating ebook soon. I think I'm going to do like an online workshop for it as well so that you guys have like have an opportunity to ask me questions and like clarify things. Other than that, I have a lot of other fun stuff coming, so just keep an eye out for that. Okay, I hope that answered all your questions. If you have any other questions, comment below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Sorry, I have so many calls to action. This is so annoying. Comment below and let me know if you have questions about my journey. I love my therapist. I think that therapy is absolutely incredible. I would encourage anyone to go to therapy, especially if you struggle with negative thoughts, because the tools that I've learned are just like invaluable, and I will forever be so grateful for that. So, okay.